Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to work with the neck and the rotation of the neck, particularly in some of our standing poses, because some of us find the neck is stiff and it's hard to turn the head to look up. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. We're going to start with seated Bharadvajasana using a chair. I'm going to turn the back of the chair to face you and I'll be mirroring you. So if you can sit with your right side body facing the back of the chair, then we're going to make sure the knees and feet are together. Feet are anchored onto the floor. So if you're quite short and it's difficult for you to get your feet anchored, sit further forward on the seat or put bricks underneath your feet. But let's twist to the right. So as we twist, ensure the lumbar spine is lifted, ensure the chest is lifted, because if we're trying to turn the head, which involves the neck, and the chest is collapsed, usually the shoulders are rounding forward and we get very stuck. The neck will get stuck. So lumbar spine lifts, sternum lifts, push into the chair with your right hand to pivot the right chest further around to the right and roll that right shoulder tip back. And let's see if we can get some freedom to turn the head towards the right, but then stay in the twist and turn the head towards your left. Make sure your left shoulder's rolling back as well. Then turn your head back towards the right, towards the left. So you're staying in your spinal twist, but you're twisting the neck in the different directions. Keep going so you can alternate from forward and back. Keeping the head in its neutral position, crown of the head lifting towards the ceiling. So here we're just playing with mobilizing the neck. And bring your head back to neutral and we'll come out of the twist. Then we'll turn ourselves around so that the left side of the body is facing the back of the chair. Bring the knees and the feet together. Sit up straight. Remember that sitting up straight stems from what you're doing in the pelvic lumbar region. So if the pelvis is pulled back, the lumbar will also be pulled back and the chest will be dropped. So roll the pelvis forward enough you feel that you can lift the lumbar. Then the chest lifts and you pivot. Turn to your right, left, <laughs> turn to your left. I'm mirroring you so sometimes I get confused with lefts and rights. But when you twist, use the pressure of your hand on the handle of the chair. So you're pushing your left hand onto the handle of the chair, rolling your left shoulder tip back, sternum up, then turn the head, look back over the left shoulder, watch you're not shortening the left side of the neck, see if you can keep both sides of the neck the same length, and then stay in the twist but turn your head in the opposite direction. So turning back to look over the right shoulder. Then again, turn the head, looking back over the left. And now you can go at your pace, you're alternating the direction the head is turning, even though you're staying in the spinal twist. So continue to press your left hand against the handle of the chair, rolling the left shoulder tip back, and try not to shorten either side of the neck. And then come back to neutral and we'll come out of the twist. And just pause there for a moment. Then when you're ready, come to stand up. We're going to take the full length of the mat to the wall so we've got some support for the next few poses. Because when we're turning the head, we're going to see if we can turn the head a lot further than we ordinarily would. And that could potentially throw us off balance. So if we've got the wall, then we know we're safe. So we've got the long edge of the mat coming against the wall. We'll be having the chair on the right side of the mat, but we need to create a lot of padding here on the handle to support the neck. So let's get quite a number of blankets. Depends on how thick your blankets are. I've got reasonably thick blankets. So if this is the shape that we use for shoulder stand, you can fold in half and if they are thick blankets that might be enough to then put over 
the handle. And then I've got two blankets like that. But you may need to fold the blankets even more and you may need to use more blankets. And that's something you'll find out when you come into the pose. So for Trikonasana, we we'll step the right foot so the toes are coming under the chair or between the chair legs and we make sure the thigh is turning out, foot's turning out, we take the left leg back. Then you'll need to find out when you come over the leg, is the neck going to come onto your blanket? So that's when we might need to just do a little bit of adjusting. So I'm leaning into the wall, I've got my right buttock to the wall. I want to bring my neck onto the, uh, the support here, but I also want to be able to straighten the leg. So as I straighten the leg, tilt the pelvis over the femur bone, and I can reach the hand onto the seat of the chair or perhaps onto the crossbar of the chair or maybe onto the shin. Find what works for you. But initially I want to take my head a little bit forward of the line of my right foot because then when I turn, I roll the neck on the blanket, my head will then come back in line with my right foot. So you can bring your head forward a little bit and then you're going to rotate. So this left hand can sit on the waist. You're going to rotate the head so that then the left shoulder or elbow comes back to the wall and maybe even your left ear comes back to the wall. The neck and the base of the skull is supported so make sure your chair and your blankets are in the right spot. And then just check is the left side of the, is the right side of the neck uh, lengthening more than the left? Can you pressurize the inner right foot down? Keep the right side turning out. Lengthen the right waist as you're leaning over the leg. And perhaps you can stretch your top arm up. So with the head turning, you can look towards your fingertips, you can look beyond your fingertips to a point on the ceiling. Press your left thigh back, plug the left heel down. and we can come to stand up. So if it's helpful, you can use your left hand on the chair, push into the chair, come to stand up. Now we'll keep our chair on this side and we're going to use it for two more poses, but let's step out of the pose for a moment and we'll bring a brick into the picture. Now for Pajvokanasana, the lateral angle pose, you can have your brick, whether you'd like it standing tall or lower down at blade shape. You can start with it tall and then you can adjust as we go. But again, we've got the right foot turning out, right buttock on the wall. We're going to hop the left leg back, take a long stride. You may not be sinking the hips down as low as normal because we're going to be using this support for the neck. But the arm comes inside the leg as your hand reaches to the brick. And again, the head will come forward a little bit so that you've got room to roll the head back towards the wall. So the hand, left hand can sit on the waist. If you can manage, you descend the hips, but obviously we want to make sure that this is your priority, your neck support. So then rotate the head, turn so that the left ear comes to the wall. And perhaps you can get a sense of the chin sitting lower than the forehead, rather than having the, the chin sticking up. It's almost as if you're trying to draw your chin towards your left shoulder. Use your right arm in front of the knee, press the knee back, asking for that right thigh to turn out. If you're steady, left arm can stretch up the wall. Rotate the left chest up. Turn your navel up towards the ceiling. As you press left thigh back, plug left heel down. Then as we come out of the pose, you can lower left arm, press left hand to the chair as you come all the way up. Step out of the pose, we'll take a couple of breaths. Before we continue with the chair on this side, we're going to do one more pose and that's Ardha Chandrasana. Now, if you're quite stiff or you're tall, your legs are long, you may need to prop your chair up with a couple of bricks underneath your chair leg. So this is what it would look like, one brick under each chair leg. So the, this height is more uh, suited for your neck. 
If you're reasonably supple, you might find this height still suits you. And again, we can have a brick ready for the hand. So we're going to be balancing on the right leg, turn the right knee, right thigh out and find out where can the neck sit on this. Have you got the right space? So just do a bit of trial and error here. When you try raising your back legs, standing, balancing on the right leg, is your neck in the good spot? So again, we're going to have the head a little bit forward so that when you turn the head, so raise the left leg first, then turn the head. Can you bring your ear back towards the wall, left side of the head, back towards the wall as you turn your head, the neck is supported. You should feel the support of the blanket underneath the base of the skull. Keep the right thigh turning out. So that right elbow might be a little bit bent. Maybe you can lower your brick, but maybe the fingertips now need to be on your brick. Find out what works. Top arm stretches up. So you can keep the right buttock on the wall, but roll the right buttock towards the left foot. Turn the left chest up. Peel the navel up towards the ceiling as you push out through the inner left foot. And then we can lower the left hand to the chair, bend the right leg, lower the left leg, and come to stand up. So now we're going to move our chair set up to the other side. So we have this chair to the far end of the mat. You bring your blankets back closer to the wall because that's where the neck and the head will be. For the first pose, we don't need our brick, so we can move the brick out of the way. You might like to use your brick. Trikonasana. So you bring your right foot, sorry, left foot. <laughs> Again, I'm mirroring you. So this is my right foot, but for you it will be your left foot. Bring your left foot underneath your chair, turn the thigh out. And when you take your long stride, lean over and find out, is the chair in the right spot? Do you need to bring it in a little closer? Do you need to step back a little more? And find out then where do you, where do you feel comfortable with your hand? Do you want it on the seat of the chair? Do you want it on the crossbar? Do you want it on your shin? Or perhaps do you want it on your brick? But as you lean over, try not to shorten this waist. Can you feed the femur bone into the pelvis, tilt the pelvis over the thigh, and then we want to turn the head. So remember your head comes forward a little bit, so you've got room to turn the head. Right hand can sit on the waist. Make sure that your right leg is back towards the wall. And then perhaps you can feel the right side of the back of the head there and the, the right ear coming to the wall. Both legs are strong and straight. Then you could try stretching your right arm up towards the ceiling. Pin the right shoulder to the wall. Rotate the right chest up towards the ceiling and direct the left buttock, as you're turning your left thigh out, direct your left buttock towards the right buttock. And then we can use that right hand, press it into the top of the chair, the handle of the chair, come to stand up, step out of the pose, take a breath or two, and we'll get our brick ready for Pajvukanasana, lateral angle pose. So you can step left foot behind the brick, so between the brick and the wall, bend the left knee, use the wall, let the left buttock be against the wall, and as you bend the knee, you've got that long stride back, reach your left arm inside the leg so your hand can come onto the brick. And then find out, can you get your neck onto your support? When you're ready, you start to rotate. So as you're turning the head, you bring your hand back, right hand back onto your waist. Turn the head so that your ear touches the wall. And then as if to draw the chin more towards your shoulder, so the forehead sits higher than the chin. Back of the head, base of the skull should be supported. Top arm can lift up. And you use your lower arm, the left arm, to press the knee back. 
direct your tailbone towards the right heel as you plug the right heel. But go on turning the right chest up, turning your navel up. And then you can come out of the pose. So use your right hand on the top of the chair. Slowly come up and out of the pose. And again, you can take a breath or two before we do our, our final pose. So again, we've got a tall brick. We can start with a tall brick for Ardha Chandrasana. Then you balance on your left leg. So the left knee and foot turn out. Bring your hand onto your brick. You can adjust the height of the brick once you're up in the pose. So let your side neck come onto the support. Then find out when you raise that back leg, do you feel like your standing leg's in the right spot? So right leg lifts up and your neck is supported. You start to turn the head. Top hand can come onto your waist. But you've got to roll the uh, left buttock towards the right heel. And if your elbow's bent, you want to go a bit lower, you can. Maybe you need to be on fingertips there on the blade-shaped brick. But can you feel the neck there? Turn your head in such a way that the ear comes back towards the wall, back of the neck supported. And perhaps you can take your top arm up. Stretch up through the fingertips. Pin your shoulder, right shoulder tip back to the wall as you turn the right chest up. And as you reach out through the inner right foot, rotate the navel up towards the ceiling. Then we can bring the hand back to the top of the chair, bend the left leg, lower the right leg, and come to standing. Now let's do a supported Uttanasana. So we can put the blankets, maybe the helpful there on the seat of the chair. We'll turn the chair around to face us and the brick can be out of the picture. Walk back so that when you come forward your forearms can come onto the blankets, your forehead can come onto your forearms and your ankles are vertically under your hips. Lengthen through the sides of the waist, sides of the chest and we spend a few moments slowing the breath down. If you feel stiff in the back of the legs and it's difficult to reach down to this height, you may need to be forward enough that you can reach your forearms to the top of the chair. Either way, you want to feel that the heart is resting, the head is resting and the breath is easy. When you're ready, lift the head, lift the torso and come to stand all the way up. If you like practicing with me, I invite you to check out my video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. There are over 400 full length classes in that library and I'm adding to it every week. You can start your subscription with a seven day free trial. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.